Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. A new investigative documentary has implicated Kenyan banks in money laundering for corrupt South Sudanese leaders. Protesters in Kenya took to the streets of Nairobi Thursday to demonstrate against war profiteering. Rylan War has more from Nairobi. Protesters, some of them South Sudanese, marched in Nairobi to demand that Kenyan authorities freeze assets of corrupt South Sudanese leaders and sanction Kenyan banks for money laundering. Daniel Yo Deng is a South Sudanese activist who was injured in his country's civil war and is bound to a wheelchair. These people, they have taken a lot and they are not doing anything. What they are doing is just to kill the common people. So we are tired of killing because they can kill people using the, say there is our opposition or the failure is being objected to other people. So we need this uh, protest or solidarity which has been given uh, by civil society in Kenya to be implemented. Actually, we need this money to be, to be freed. The protest was sparked by the profiteers, a three-part investigative documentary uploaded to YouTube by Kenyan-based production house Africa Uncensored. It alleges top South Sudanese officials laundered stolen funds and war proceeds through Kenya's banks, bought Nairobi property, and are being protected by Kenya's military. Millions of dollars from South Sudan. John Alan Namu is the investigation's lead reporter. We have a very positive past with South Sudan, but what has happened is that there are certain members of the business and political elite who are taking advantage of the conflict or um, aligning themselves to politicians who um, are stealing, literally stealing from South Sudan and having that money invested here. The documentary was screened this week at a Nairobi theater after Kenya's KTN News scrapped a planned broadcast of a content dispute with Africa Uncensored. Are you coming back today? Kenya's military has not commented on the allegations. Kenya's Bankers Association addressed protesters but did not confirm nor deny South Sudanese money laundering. Spokesperson Nuru Mugambi agreed to work towards ending unlawful money flows. We are aligned with your cause to reinforce the banking system and by doing so eradicate money laundering, financing of terrorism and other economic crimes. South Sudan's five-year civil war has killed an estimated 382,000 people and displaced more than 4 million from their homes. A power-sharing deal agreed to in July by President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Riek Mashar has raised hopes for an end to the conflict. But activists fear the peace deal, if it holds, would insulate South Sudan's leaders from corruption charges. Rai Lombor for VOA News, Nairobi. Nigerian youths are being encouraged to be more involved in providing solutions to national issues, especially through the use of technology. At a meeting between some youths and officials of the Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission in Kano Metropolis, the importance of research, technology and training were highlighted. This group of young Nigerians are desirous of contributing to providing solutions to local problems in their communities. Using technology, they are brainstorming on designing and creating soft and hardware platforms to educate citizens on issues such as human trafficking, corruption, underage voting, pipeline vandalism, amongst others. The convener of the workshop holding in Kanu State is optimistic that young people can contribute meaningfully to national development through the use of improved technology. We're going to all the geopolitical zones in Nigeria, bringing people together to solve community problems through shared knowledge, through um, um, rigorous um, learning exercises which they have to go through. So we want to bring all these people together on one platform. We are focusing on 18 to 35 years of age. Um, this hackathon would also involve um, com um, um, citizens' engagement. The executive chairman of the Kanu State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission expresses the government's willingness to engage young people in nation building. We find it worthy of uh, doing to be part of the Build Square initiative whereby uh, the part of the initiative is to engage uh, young people using the ICT technology now. You know, we are in the information age and uh, 
if they are not being trailed properly to be used in a positive manner, then you expect them to be part of the negative uh, you know, aspect of uh, the society. Participants are looking at dimensions of everyday life, which technology makes easier. In any of the local government or in any of the local society that we do have, there are toll gates that do exist, and uh, there are some remittance of collection of funds that are being collected in that locality, and we want to eliminate the use of paying cash by using a toll gate sensing card that when someone makes the payment, all it will be using as a credit card or a debit card. Due to the lack of education in the Nigerian and the northern part particularly, in introducing this tab, we will make sure that we insert every necessary information, such as the documentaries, modules by modules. When you finish this very module, you go to the other module, and the other module is going to be like an educative, like just an encyclopedia or an dictionary in terms of that will just solve human trafficking. Experts believe investing in technology, especially amongst Nigerian youth, will help build capacity and create more opportunities. It's time now for a short break, and we'd like to remind you to visit our website. It's channelstv.com for news and other programming around the clock. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channels web. Still to come. Craft jeans infused with unique local flavors hit South Africa's bar scene. There's smash in Johannesburg. Is the rest of the world ready for them?